So it is a weigh-in day, so I'm about to take care of that, and then I'm going to change into my workout sneakers. I've been trying to keep these sneakers separate from like my everyday shoes. I have bought new tennis shoes in the past and I used them for everything, for just, you know, errand running, sitting around, etc., etc. And they wear out really fast. So what I've been trying to do with these latest pair of sneakers is make sure I'm only putting them on for exercising and nothing else, um, just to lengthen the life on those. The shoes I'm wearing right now, is a uh, just a regular old pair of like generic cheap shoes and when I'm just like driving or honestly just sitting around um they're better shoes for that whereas I try to keep these because like they have a little they have like a foam design on the inside and stuff like that um hopefully it's helping with the impact when I'm jumping um I'm on the fence about how much I can tell. They aren't the greatest, most expensive sneakers, but they are a little more better designed for when I want exercise, movement, etc., etc. And so I'm trying to keep these uh, separate from my everyday kicking around shoes um, and to just be like my act active shoes um so see how well that works out in the long long term i've been wearing them for a while actually the hardest part is when like i'm out in a dusty uh sort of desert area or like a campground where there really isn't a lot of cement anyway um so keeping them from getting like too worn down by those experiences can sometimes be challenging when somebody only like runs on a track or only goes to the gym in their active shoes um it's a little bit easier to keep them clean and sort of separate from their everyday shoes, but I never know. I might be exercising in dirt. I might be exercising on cement. I might be exercising, you know, in a building, <laughs> uh, in a tent. Like I never know. So sort of having that control element doesn't work as well, but that's not what this video is about. We are going to go ahead and get our way in in. Well, that disappointing weigh-in is over. Um, so obviously it wasn't good news. It was a game. Um, and, you know, after the whole I'm in the 260s victory, um, I think I almost self-sabotaged myself. Um, which, which gives me a moment to talk about, like, sort of my, my fear of success in general. I know a lot of people talk about um, fear of failure. But I think this is a good opportunity to talk about fear of success and hopefully this video won't turn out horrible due to all the road noise. There is a lot of road noise right here. Um, in fact, a part of me almost wants to go inside, but it looks so much nicer out here, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, it's so much prettier um, shooting this from right here. Um, so I do believe like I... I had a little bit of self-sabotage. Remember last week I was like, uh, I'm in the 260s, but just barely. So this could all like, uh, you know, go bad on me. And <laughs> I successfully made that happen and pushed myself back up instead of down. Um, and the thing is, like, when I think back to even when I started this YouTube channel, like, I didn't have anything to lose, to be quite frank. Um, I, you know, it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> um, to be quite blunt. And so it wasn't like, you know, I had this, this great job and this great house and this great whatever, whatever. And there was this grand risk of, uh, losing it all. I, I didn't have anything. So all I could do was get better and in every way possible it has steadily gotten better um of course there have been bad days there's been struggles there's been issues but for the most part if i look at the long-term picture and i like looking at long-term pictures because when you're you're in that day-to-day -day when you're super close i don't know how many of you have seen the movie soul um but there's this cool moment where um the protagonist i'm gonna wait for these motorcycles to pass 
Um, but there's this cute, cool moment in the in the new Disney moment, Soul, where the protagonist protagonist is told this fable about, I believe it was a fish, and the fish is searching for the ocean, which of course he's in, and I forget who or what he talks to, and he's like, I'm looking for the ocean, and the fish is like, or or the, the whoever the fish is communicating with is like, you're in the ocean, this is the ocean, and he's like nah this is water i'm completely butchering the retelling of this wonderful moment if you haven't seen soul go see it but the thing is because the fish is in water he cannot see the ocean and that's why i like thinking about things in the in the bigger picture like stepping back and looking at the big picture so if i look at the big picture like if i look at yesterday to today i'm not seeing much you know it's it's fine. It, it may be better, it may be worse. It's not going to be measurable by, measurable by much, though. If I look back to when I lived in the car versus now, it's a huge difference in so many ways. And so, like, sometimes in the, it, I just get through the day today and try to think about that long-term picture. But it can have the negative impact of sort of never really appreciating where I am and almost being fearful of the moment that it's all going to be taken away and I think I live in that a lot um I've had people say oh one day you're going to be this or one day you're going to be as big as this person and I'm like no I'm not I'm not that I'm not that good like that person has this this and this I don't have that I'll never be that I'm not trying to be that um and there's almost a fear of setting a goal too big um because as I gain things to lose almost my fear increases um to a certain extent and i think i did a little not major like i didn't go into a binge fest i wasn't like throwing snack cakes in my mouth every single day but i did go into a little bit of a um even though in my brain i was like you need to amp it up you need to amp, or at least you need to stay stable at around like 1800 calories or something like that I was pushing it into, at least according to my basal ma metabolic rate, I was pushing it into um, maintenance calories. Um, and that I knew wasn't going to be a good thing. And I know every time I gain, people talk about like muscle weighs more than fat, muscle weighs more than fat. And there may be like some things with muscle going on, but here's the the fact for the first time in a long time, I missed two days of exercise this week. Um, and I can give a bunch of excuses for why, but for the first time in a long time, I actually missed two days, which hasn't been my standard. Um, and I know diet's more important than exercise and nutrition and blah, 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 and all, all the, the, the jargon, um, which isn't untrue, but also like my diet wasn't on point. And as I've said repeatedly in these videos, um, I find for me, when one falls off, the other falls off. And the cumulative effect, again, that long-term vision of both of them falling off is usually the, the week doesn't turn out the way I want it to at the end of the week. It is not the end of the world. You know, it hasn't been weeks and weeks and weeks of gains. Um, I can turn it around. It was 269. I didn't expect, uh, it's a very loud truck, so we're gonna wait a second. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to just shoot this straight through. Um, I didn't expect, you know, some stunning victory this week. And I think it's a good time to talk about the difference between weight loss versus fat loss. Um, because the whole muscle is, is, um, is heavier than fat or wh whatever the line is, is very common. Um, it's actually based on a slight misunderstanding, I hate to say, because I know when people say it, it's like they see you working hard, so they want an explanation too. And so it's very easy to attach yourself to that. And it's not untrue, but it's kind of untrue. A pound of muscle weighs a pound. A pound of fat weighs a pound. The thing is, the way a pound of fat presents itself is different from the way a pound of muscle presents itself. A pound of muscle tends to look leaner. It tends to look um, tighter. Um, it, it tends to not be as loosey-goosey flabby. Now, with people who are losing a lot of weight, this can even get more confusing because of the loose skin problem, which is fairly common if you're coming from an excessive amount of weight. Now, the thing is, when you're trying to lose weight, your body does not care if it's uh, fat or muscle. 
Um, it really doesn't care. It's like, I don't have enough calories to maintain this. And so it will take your muscle as quickly as it takes your fat. <laughs> Um, so the opposite is true like as you if you're working out and you're gaining muscle there might be some uh, it might be hard to gauge what what the gains and losses are and body percentage body fat percentage measurement tools unless you pay a bunch of money and go to a lab are honestly mostly highly inaccurate so they can be helpful for you like your, your your emotional health but they're not necessarily that accurate so it's really just a gamble like you really never freaking know for sure unless you really go to a doctor or a lab or somebody have them measurement a lot of the fat body percentage ways are they're just inaccurate and they're hard to do and hard to really have any hundred percent trust in I like to look at it as data. If you're measuring anything and you're seeing it going down or you're seeing it going up, it's not about the attachment to the number. It's about is it going down or up? And, and what is your preference in that case? Um, whatever you're measuring, whatever your measurement is. Now, if you're seeing visible thinness while not much weight loss, then you probably are gaining muscle. So that's another way to gaze it. Like if you're doing measurements, I personally am doing measurements once a month. Um, I'll do my next measurement either next week or the week after. I think it's next week is my proper cycle um, because next week will be the last of the of the of the month long. It, it's been about a month starting next week. So I believe next week is my measurement week. Um, but the point is, when you are in a caloric, excuse me, that was gross. When you're in a caloric deficit, which is what makes you lose weight, that weight loss does not care if it's taking fat or muscle. It really does not care. You're going to lose both. And so while, again, a statement is vaguely true, you know, your nutrition is more important than your exercise for weight loss, that is entirely true. You can lose a bunch of weight and never do a bit of exercise, you're also losing muscle because muscle also has weight, especially if you are not exercising or not doing anything to maintain that muscle. Yes, cardio burns a lot of calories, but muscle <laughs> is ensuring that you're building muscle while you're losing muscle because you cannot really to any real extent avoid muscle loss as well as fat loss if you're losing weight because the two are combined in your weight loss and and you can't do much about it except try to maintain and build muscle you know as you are on a weight loss journey so it's a very sort of i almost understand at times i i feel like um i can get into analysis paralysis because like i do understand a lot of the science at a very basic level at a very basic level i understand a lot of the science um and understanding those variables doesn't make you behave properly when there's other stuff going on and um i think i did a little bit of self-sabotage this week because I am really good at that. There are times where the channel was doing well and it scared me so much, I did not post a video for a while. And it was just because I was like, oh my gosh, what, you know, if, 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 what if the next thing I do is the thing that takes it all away? Um, and the fact is the worst thing I did was not post a video for a while <laughs> because that definitely will hurt the channel because at the end of the day, you know, having a YouTube channel and having it do well is about consistent content. Um, and there's been more than a few times I've fallen off of my content just because of fear. And I'm like, oh, I, I actually got a thousand subscribers. <laughs> Okay, now I feel responsible. Oh wow, people actually signed up for my Patreon. Oh crap, now I have this this big obligation um, to to this to this massive thing where I was like, nobody's gonna sign up for that. Nobody's gonna support me on Patreon. And then like I was like, okay, I can handle this. This is at a level I can handle. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the best of this, and we're just gonna maintain at this level, and I'm good with that. And then it grows and I get back into that paralysis state where I'm like, oh, <laughs> what do I do with this now? Now this has gotten bigger. So the methods I was using before to keep up with it aren't working as well. Um, and, and sort of being paralyzed by not knowing what to do. And I'm sure there's more than a few people who, who think I'm a jerk. 
um, because they sent me something and I didn't get back to them because I was overrun by all this other stuff and I was trying to take care of everything or so overwhelmed by the idea of taking care of everything that I took care of nothing and just went into a vegetative state for a couple of days. Um, and so I fight with that all the time. And I know that it's a thing that I specifically go through is not fear, fear failure. I fear success. I fear like doing good at something. Um, I think even last week, the reason why I said, um, I'm in the 260s, but I'm barely in the 260s. It's only 269 point whatever it was. Um, so obviously this is going to backfire next week. And it also almost became a self-fulfilling um, prophecy. Um, I do have some of my, you know, exercise work from this week and all of that. But honestly, I'm not going to put it in the video this week. I am going to hold on to it. I hold on to my footage every week because I'm hoping there will be a long-term picture that I'm very proud of where I can show sort of the transition I went through so I'm gonna hold on to that footage I'm not gonna show any exercise footage from this week um, I'm not gonna really get into that I am just going to put this video up um, and uh, breathe for a little second and sort of get my ducks back in order because I don't think this is a case of oh you're gaining muscle I think like I fell off I had excess calories rather I gained muscle or fat that's a factor I can't control I can control gaining weight and can't, gaining weight comes from not being in a calorie deficit um it is only 270 and honestly I'd weighed myself like five minutes before and it was like 269.8 or something like that so I basically feel like I, I stayed in a maintenance phase and in a maintenance phase you will fluctuate you know a pound or two here and there and I was and according to my BMR and what I ate this week um, I was very much at maintenance um, um, and there were days where I was like all right you're done you know and then like I was like laying in bed um, watching some Netflix and I was like man I can, I can have another a bag of pretzels and some hummus it's not a big deal that that's a healthy snack um, and in the grand scheme of snacks like we're, we're talking about you know something it's not horrible like it's you know I didn't like eat like a half pint of ice cream but it doesn't really matter like if it puts you in excess calories because there is a point to your body where like a calorie is a calorie um or the need to burn is the need to burn and it will take your fat as easily as it will take your muscle um and all you're doing with exercise and especially with strength training exercises is just trying to maintain the muscle um so you don't lose a decent amount of it in the process of sort of weight loss um yeah that that's my that's my blah 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 i'll see you guys next week on this subject and i'm definitely going to try to do some happier subjects in between now and then see ya so after that kind of depressing video i wouldn't blame you if you just like i'm gonna unsubscribe right now but if for some reason you haven't been sparked to unsubscribe or you haven't subscribed yet there is a subscribe button right below this video as well as a thumbs up and a thumbs down which you can use at your leisure then a comment section if you want to tell me what i got wrong about nutrition science in this video i probably had a couple of things a little skewed I took like one nutrition class in college and you know, I've done some research here and there on the internet and I'm not a trained nutritionist. I'll see you in the next video.